With me right now, if you're watching on the stream, is Ennis Cantor. Uh, Ennis, who got the big award late last night, the mm -hmm. MVP, Most yeah. Valuable Patriot. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Great to see you. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate that. What is it like for you? Because you used to going to other countries, playing on world, uh, uh, national teams. But you were with last night a bunch of people you probably, you know, they weren't the sports crowd. You yeah. know, they weren't the ESPN crowd. Yep. It was the Fox crowd. About 7,000 people came. And who knows how many people just were, just here couldn't get tickets but just wanted to walk around. You know, when they got up and started to chant freedom, it hit me so hard. My heart, My heart was just melting. It just showed that how kind they are, how nice they are. And I remember just while I was giving my speech, one of this lady just screamed and said, we are, not, we, have, we are your family now. I just got so emotional. I really like couldn't say anything because I was like, oh, my God, this is just something so unique, something so beautiful, something so amazing. So it really touched my heart. Yeah, so Ennis Cantor Freedom, I should say, that you changed your name, you added that mm -hmm. because you really value that. And... And because you did that, you made a stand, and it's cost you basically for now your basketball yeah. career. You're you're with me, and I'm glad, but you're in great shape. Right. You're 30 years old. You should be on the NBA. Still NBA working roster. out. You know, I'm still working out. I mean, it, I mean, I love basketball. You know, my my whole life, I wanted to become an NBA player, which I did. I played 11 years in the league. I'm very thankful for it. But unfortunately, when you talk about some of the problems that were happening in China, just because of NBA in China does billions of dollars of business and stuff, and there are so much endorsement deals, shoe sales, jersey sales, TV deals. They're like, okay, your time is up here. You know, it's goodbye. And that really hurt. Celtics cut you, right? Yeah. They waived they you. They and and you, you could have helped a lot of teams in the playoffs. Oh, my God, yeah. I mean, I'm still 30. I can go out there and play, you know. I can start in, with m many teams out there. Seven foot. Seven foot. Yeah. 255, ready never, to go. Never had, a, never had a serious injury. <laughs> nope, never. I mean, I played 11 years and almost never uh, missed a game. What did your agent say? My agent, this is exactly what he said. I remember the first time, I, it was the first game I took about the problems that were happening in China. He called me and said, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't work for the NBA, I work for you. So if you don't say anything that whatever happened in China, then people are going to forget about this in three, four days. But... Uh, if you continue to uh, continue to uh, talk about it, you're not going to be able to find a, any job uh, this guy coming up here. And this is exactly what happened. He literally reached out 30 teams, all the coaches, all the GMs, all the presidents. They said not one of them is interested. And did they let you know, let him know why, or nope. you just reached out because that's legal? That uh, yeah, obviously that I can go out there and sue them, which I'm probably is going to do it. Yeah, you've talked to lawyers. Yes, I did talk to my lawyers, but I just. You know, this seven, eight months has been so busy. I was just going out there and giving speeches and stuff. But, like, I think once I'm, like, uh, now uh, back at home, I'm definitely uh, looking forward to suing them. Wow. And then, of course, that would put everything on hold. Would you play in Israel or somewhere else? Uh, or would you play in Italy? Good question. Well, unfortunately, right now, the Turkish Airlines is sponsored in the EuroLeague. So it looks like it's going to be very tough. <laughs> to tell everyone, you're from Turkey, yeah. and basically when mm -hmm. you spoke out against the Erdogan's crackdown, exactly. they cracked down on your family, and yeah. they, they wanted to you to be extradited and jailed. My name is on Interpol list still, till this day. What list? My Interpol list. Interpol list. So it's like a, a red notice. Were you worried about going to the U.K.? You just came from the U.K. I just came from U.K. Were you yeah. worried? I mean... Oh, because they're uh, not in the EU anymore. I'm an American uh, citizen now. Oh, okay. You know, I had the American passport. It's so... It feels so relaxing. So it feels so amazing to just give them the American passport, and they're like, well, you're good to go. And if you didn't have it, they would... You that would not would have left. Very ugly. Because I remember the Knicks were going to, going to <laughs> London, England. actually. Yeah, to yep. London. I didn't go. And you didn't go. And I said, yep. what's going on here? Exactly. So, no, if I... If, I wasn't, didn't become an American citizen or didn't have an American passport. There was no way, and which I didn't. Uh, you know, since be, uh, till I become an American citizen, I didn't leave America for six years. So you had you, you told me originally when you came in when you were with the Celtics a couple of years mm -hmm. ago, you said, "Yeah, I can't contact my family." They checked the yeah, text messages. Exactly. Your dad's a doctor. My dad was, was a, a doctor, doctor and scientist, he, and he got fired. He got fired. And my sister went to medical school for six years. She still cannot find a job. My little brother was playing basketball, kicked down in every team, just because of the same last name. So, And your other brother is playing? Uh, other brother plays basketball in Japan. Yeah. In Japan, yeah. okay. So they put my dad in jail for a while just because of I spoke out, uh, spoke out against the problems that are happening in China. And you don't want, Turkey. Right, and you don't want responsibility. So if you reach out mm -hmm. to your dad and they find the text message, yeah, you just have to call. Bad. That will right. be really bad.
So you know. that's a tough way to live. You can only contact your, uh, your other one brother. It's been nine years now that I have not seen or communicated with my mom and dad because if I do, then they will be in trouble. Right. And they don't even want to take that chance, you know. But I talk to my brother and always ask him, how's my mom and dad doing? Now, what, do you, what is your sense as you see the things with China and Taiwan heat up and the, our Speaker oh, of the House God. go over there? And the fact is there is a chips deal yeah. out there that's going to have us yeah. divesting our technology from them. We have not removed the tariffs. Mm-hmm. Things between America and China... Yeah. are really getting bad. They are, yeah. There's got to be pressure on these corporations to pull out manufacturing <laughs> as well as finance. You know, when the, the war started between uh, Russia and Ukraine, I see all these corporations that were p- pulling out of uh, Russia. I was like, if China was invading, uh, uh, you know, Taiwan, I wonder if the, the same corporation, same CEO, same people will p- pull out of uh, China. Why? Be- I mean, It's much more lucrative to be in China as opposed to ex- Russia. Exactly. I mean, I mean it just... It just, I, I just have seen the hypocrisy, hypocrisy of the NBA and Wall Street and academias and um, big techs and stuff. It just, it just kills me inside. So, uh, Ennis Cantor Freedom's with us. So, when you're watching the Black Lives Riots and mm-hmm. when you're at, because they say the inequity of race in America, mm-hmm. and when you're seeing the All-Star Game getting pulled out mm-hmm. of, of Atlanta sure. because of, Atlanta, yep. uh, because of, uh, because they don't like the election law, mm-hmm. it goes to another mm-hmm. place. No one, no one paid the price for that. We're going to take ethical stands. But then you sit there and go, wait a second. You know the Uyghurs are being enslaved. Exactly. They happen to be Muslim, too. And there's such a fear in this country of a Muslim hate because of 9-11. Everyone's very vigilant mm-hmm. about it. Yep. But we've turned our backs on the uh, Muslim Uyghurs, and we're still dealing with an, an increasingly oppressive new uh, pre- president of China. You know, when the players were uh, standing up about what, what was happening in America, the, from, from the first moment I knew that they're only doing it for their own PR because they know that they're not going to lose any kind of endorsement deals, they're not going to lose any kind of contracts or shoe sales or uh, jersey sales, but they know as soon as they stand up that the, the things are happening in China, they will be cut from the NBA immediately, you know. Uh, but um, when you look at China right now, there are three, four million you know, Muslim ethnic groups uh, called Uyghurs in concentration camps getting tortured and raped every day. So I just couldn't sleep at night while my Muslim brothers and sisters were getting destroyed and killed on the other side of the world. And I just, you know, I was like, this is bigger than basketball. And also, don't they have to give up their religion? Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. China pressured them so much. And it just, there's been so much, you know, like the reports out there, which is, you know, rape, you know, organ harvesting and surveillance cameras for sterilization and abortion. Um, it's very unfortunate. Yeah, I would say very unfortunate. So last night, uh, the Patriot Awards took place. The first honoree was, uh, was Annis. And I, we, mm-hmm. I was one of the people that they gave you uh, the award. Here is a, how, here's a portion of his speech. By the way, nothing written down. Just off the top of his head. Cut 28. The last eight, nine months has been very lonely. When you talk about some of the problems that were happening in China, and unfortunately, the organization that I played in, it was a very tough time, so that's what I will say, that's what I will leave, leave with it. But uh, the people that I call my brothers, I'm referring to my teammates, you know, I had hundreds of teammates, I played 11 years in the league, and you know, I told them, this is bigger than basketball, this is bigger than NBA, this is bigger than ourselves. While we are... While we are dribbling a basketball in this country, on the other side of the world, people are losing their lives, losing their homes, and losing their loved ones. Yeah. So we have to stand up for those innocent people. And, and just yeah. your, 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 fellow, your former teammates and all the teams you've been on, the all-star teams. I'm so disappointed in them. You know, I remember the first time I started to uh, talk about the problems that happened in China. You know, they, they knew what's going on. I even told them, like, listen, just join me. We'll, we, we can create this movement together. They said, listen, we love you. I think what you're doing is so amazing. We support you, but we just cannot do it out loud. I asked them why. They said, well, we have shoe deals, endorsement deals. We want to get another contract. I asked them one simple question. I was like, put yourself in their shoes. If your mother, if your daughter was getting tortured and raped every day, would you still pick money and business over your morals, values, and principles? No answer. But you also did something on your sneakers. I did. <laughs> Talk about that. Well, I, when I was a kid, I remember whenever I watched an NBA game, the first thing I was looking at was the shoes, you know. And then the next day I was waking up, I was like, Dad, please buy those shoes for me. So I wanted to reach out to these artists around the world who've been oppressed by their government and created this, you know, non-slave labor shoes and put all the struggles on the shoes and go out there and play. 
So, because there was no rule against it. During the NBA uh, bubble, all the players were put on their shoes. Black Lives Matter, you know, uh, I can't breathe and George Floyd and yeah, all that course, stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, there is no rule against it. And now whenever I put free Tibet, free Uyghurs, free Hong Kong, stand with Taiwan, it becomes a problem. I just, and first game I remember was Madison Square Garden. Two gentlemen from the NBA came to me and said, take your shoes off. Or you're gonna get banned. Who say? Who said that? The uh, Knicks? The, no, oh, the, uh, the, 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 the people who works at the, yeah, the people who works at the Celtics. I mean, they're the equipment uh, managers. And I was just shocked. I'm like, what are you talking about? I looked at the rule book. There is no rule against it. They said, well, you've been getting so much, uh, you know, attention pressure from the internationally. It was from China, and in the halftime, in the halftime, all Celtics games are banned in China. I was like, well, that clearly shows my point. Yeah. That clearly shows the censorship. And the dictatorship. And that game, I played zero minutes, which I played every game before that. Somehow, they didn't want me to play that game. So you talked to your coach? I did. And he was just telling me about, well, it's this issue, it's that, that issue. But he never, I mean, all the players would came to me and said, listen, man, you keep wearing those shoes, you're not going to play basketball again. So what do you want? I was like, I'm wearing the shoes. So. And, and you had a few different designs, didn't you? One did. free debate. Free Tibet, free Hong Kong, stand with Taiwan, free Uyghurs, uh, stop organ harvesting, uh, (laughs) surveillance cameras. So I really wanted to expose the Chinese government for what they're doing wrong. You know, always because I mean, it just it was just everybody was scared. Everybody talks about all the problems that were happening in the world, but when it comes to one specific topic, China, they're silent because it's money. Exactly. Right. And, and exactly. there's, there's no, no hell to pay for putting down America right now. You know, I was very confused before this COVID. All the NBA players, whenever their season was over, before they go to vacation with their family, they were going to China. I was like, why are these people going to China? Why are all my teammates all of a sudden just going to China to do a basketball camp? Yeah. But now I know. They go there. They, you know, try to come close with the government and they want to do some kind of businesses and try to get endorsement deals. I'm like, this is crazy. Right. They don't need to teach Chinese exactly. kids to play basketball. By the way, they're not getting it. I mean, is China exactly. any good? Yeah. I mean, no. Aren't they terrible? No, they're terrible. Yeah. Then they, they want there's to be great not, in soccer, too. They're, they're terrible in soccer. They're now one, I guess, I don't think there's any Chinese player in Ping the league. Pong? Yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't think so. Japan, yeah. did, Japan, Japan put some players Japan in Japan does, yes. Were you, you a good soccer player? I am, actually. I wanted to be a soccer player when I was growing up. And you just kept growing? And I just keep growing. I'm like, you know what? I'm too tall and too slow for this game. Right. So I'm just going <laughs> to I switch to basketball. Center back? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. No kidding. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.